So let's move on and understand immunity and transfer factors and appreciate that it is the core of wellness. Immunity is the core of wellness. You wouldn't be here tonight if it, not, if it were not for your immune system. And wellness is more than the absence of disease. Absence of disease is healthy. Wellness is the optimal state of health. You're as healthy as you can be. And the difficult thing is we can't measure it. But there's probably been times in your life when you can feel it. You wake up in the morning full of energy. You work a 10-hour day. You don't even get sleepy. Somebody invites you out for a party, and you go to that too. Okay? That, that's, that's, that's wellness. And we can illustrate that with what I call the disease iceberg. Now, everybody knows that most of the iceberg is below sea level, right? Now, how many of you have actually seen an iceberg? Okay, we have some experts in the crowd. But we all know that most of the iceberg is below sea level. But in this case, with the disease iceberg, I spell C-S-E-E, -E, not S-E-A. Because it is at the sea level, above sea level, is where clinical disease is. Clinical disease is a disease you can measure. You can see it. You can measure it. You can feel it. Physicians can... Um, pick it up with instruments, uh, and oftentimes you have signs and symptoms of disease. That's called clinical disease. And that represents about 20% of all disease. So the rest of disease is below sea level. And just below sea level is something we call subclinical disease. You really don't have any signs and symptoms, but if somebody takes a blood sample or an x-ray, something shows up. And that is the basis of a, a lot of our diagnostics. We go in for routine screening. Men, you get your PSAs done. Uh, women get mammograms, et cetera, et cetera, to try and pick up the subclinical disease because we can't feel it, we can't see it. And so we need instrumentation. Now as we go down deeper in the iceberg, we get into kind of a nebulous gray area called vulnerable or pre-disease state. We're really not diseased but we're very vulnerable to disease. Can you think of a place in your life where you have been made vulnerable? What happened when you were vulnerable to disease? Everybody's been there. Huh? What made you vulnerable? You may have been exposed to a bunch of kids who had it, who made you vulnerable. Okay? But there's some other kinds of vulnerabilities that occur in our life? They're very, very common. This is not a hard question. Stress. stress. Yeah. Emotional stress. Sleep deprivation. You know? My kids are out past 2 o'clock in the morning. You get stressed. And that happens day after day after day. You're going to get sick. What else makes you vulnerable? Bad nutrition. Bad nutrition. Now, down here deep in the, in the iceberg, we got this other kind of nebulous area called healthy. Uh, we really don't know how to measure it. How many of you ever heard a story about somebody who went in for a physical exam, the doctor says, you're healthy, and the next day they die of a heart attack? I, I personally had encountered stories like that. And so is it that we don't know what we're doing? Well, that's a little harsh. But we don't know how to measure health uh, very well. We're very good at measuring disease. We don't know how to measure health. And, but then below healthy is a place where I think wellness lives. And it's even more of a uh, concept. But wellness is health that's like a very good rubber band. You can stretch it, and when you let go, it snaps back into shape. Stress stretches it, and it gets some rest, it snaps back into shape. Malnutrition stresses it, and then it snaps back into shape. And so it has the ability to be resilient. Uh, 